Another cup of Maxwell House coffee, George? Sure, pour me a cup, Gracie. You know, Maxwell House is always good to the last <laughs> drop. That drop's good, too. Yes, it's Maxwell House coffee time, starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. With our special guest, Marlena Dietrich, yours truly, Toby Reed, B. Benadaret, Harry Lubin and the Maxwell House Orchestra, and Bill Goodwin. For America's Thursday night comedy enjoyment, it's George and Gracie. And for America's everyday coffee drinking enjoyment, it's Maxwell House. Always good to the last drop. <laughs> Officially, there are three more days until spring, but George Burns decided not to wait. He caught cold today. We find him now propped up in bed, surrounded by blankets and hot water bottles, with Gracie hovering over him like a mother bird. Uh, 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 Thank you. Now, here, darling, try a teaspoon of this. Oh. Open wide. That's it. There. Holy smoke. Stuff tastes like shampoo. Now take a teaspoon of this. Oh, come on, take it oh. like a little man. That's the way. Ooh, that tastes like hand lotion. Oh, thanks, dear. Well, at last I've got that straightened out. Huh? Well, the labels came off these two bottles and I didn't know which one was. You mean I swallowed shampoo and hand lotion? Mm -hmm, but it won't hurt you. In fact, it might help you. You have the cleanest, softest tummy in town. Oh, the nitwit. No wonder the National Safety Council slogan is don't be a Gracie. Now, I still dear while I put this mustard plaster down you. Hold it. What kind of a mustard plaster is that? It's red. Well, I couldn't find any mustard, so I made it with ketchup. It's a good thing we ran out of pickles. <laughs> Look, Gracie, stop nursing me. No, darling, I'll nurse you like Florence nursed her nightingale. I'll be better in about 30 years. You see, I've got to get you well by tonight. Tonight? Why tonight? Well, this is the night of the big pageant given by my club, the Beverly Hills Uplift Society. Gracie, why don't you drop out of that club? That's the silliest bunch of women that ever got together. The Beverly Hills Uplift Society is a charitable organization. It is? The women, the, the, the money from our pageant will be used to buy clothing for unfortunate girls. What unfortunate girls? The girls of the Beverly Hills Uplift Society. <laughs> I, uh, I thought so. The girls are given the pageant tonight to welcome the arrival of spring. Spring will take a look at those dames and refuse to arrive. <laughs> Forget the club and stay home, dear. Well, I can't, dear. I'm in the pageant. You know, in the opening scene, I'm a caterpillar. A caterpillar. Yeah, and then later I turn into a butterfly. I see. And at the end of the show, everyone chases me with nets. <laughs> that they'll do whether you're a butterfly or not. <laughs> be a thrilling pageant. I bet it will. You know, as the curtain goes up, you see all the girls on the stage dressed as flowers. I see. And then Clara Bagley enters as a fairy, and as she passes the girls, they jump three feet in the air. They represent the flowers springing up. But, Gracie, the uplifters aren't young anymore. Uh, how can they jump three feet? Well, Clara has a wand. Oh. <laughs> It's, uh, it's magic. It's magic. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> then out comes Blanche Morton. She's a sprite. I just got in town. Let's have that again. <laughs> what's, a, what's a sprite? A, a sprite. sprite? Yes, what is that? Sprite. Well, uh, she looks like that girl you find on White Rock. Oh. She looks like she was found under a wet rock. <laughs> How was that? Nothing, nothing. I'm just that living. Uh. Stay home tonight, dear. <laughs> Are you home? Oh, yes, Blanche. I'm in the bedroom here with George. I'll be right out. Now, stay covered, dear. Tell her to find a new caterpillar. <laughs> Hello, Blanche. Hello, Gracie. I'm on my way downtown to get some tights for my Sprite costume. <laughs> How's George's cold? Oh, not so good, Blanche. Oh, uh, well, I'll be glad to make him some hot chicken broth. Oh, no, 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 no. You're too busy. You go on and put on your tights for the pageant. I've got chicken legs. No, you wear your tights on. <laughs> but if George isn't better by tonight, I'll have to stay home with him. Well, Gracie, why not hire a sitter? 
babysitter? Uh-huh. Someone to stay with George and wait on him. Like a babysitter. Well, wouldn't a grown-up sitter be better? <laughs> they are grown-ups, Gracie. They're girls who earn money that way. Oh! Well, I... Oh, uh, come in. Hi, Gracie. Oh, hello, Mrs. Morton. Oh, hello, How do you, Mr. Goodwin? Where's George? Well, he's in bed with a cold bell. You know, I'm thinking of hiring a babysitter to stay with him tonight. Oh, well, you're lucky I came along, Gracie. I got a whole list of them. But you don't have any children. How come you know so many? Well, who do you think sits with the babysitter while the babysitter sits with the baby? <laughs> Bill Goodwin, can't you think of anything better than chasing girls? Yeah, catching them. <laughs> well, I'll be running along, Gracie. Let me know what happens. All right, Blanche, goodbye. Say, can I see the little man? Oh, sure, Bill. He's right here in the bedroom. Well, George, old pal, Gracie told me about your cold. Have you called a doctor? Eh, there's nothing anybody can do for a cold, Bill. Might as well call an African witch doctor. What do they do? Well, they scare sickness away with horrible-looking faces. And does it work? If it did, George would be a well man. <laughs> some of the summer replacement yes. stuff. Yes. Right. a babysitter to stay with you tonight, George. A babysitter? You can forget that. Not but me. George. Nothing doing, right. George. George, the girl I have in mind is a gorgeous redhead. She can sit here and read your book. I don't want a gorgeous redhead reading a book. Say, that wouldn't be bad. <laughs> well, George, I didn't know you cared that much for books. Well, if... <laughs> well, if I have good lines. Well, I don't know about the book lines, but I can guarantee the redhead. Well, I'm not leaving George alone with any beautiful young girl. Well, good, good. Then it's settled, and you'll stay home from that silly Uplift Society pageant. Oh, no. I'll find some nice, sweet old grandmother to stay with you. Now, wait a minute, Chris. <laughs> Bill, do you know any grandmothers? Uh, well, yes. Oh, uh, look, Gracie. good. I have to uh, go try on my butterfly costume. Uh, Gracie. And you get a grandmother to sit with George tonight. Uh, Gracie. And tell her to bring her knitting. Uh, Gracie. I'll look. see you later, dear. Uh, Goodbye, Bill. Uh, Gracie. Now, listen, Bill. I'm not going to lie here all evening listening to some old babe click her teeth in her knitting needles. <laughs> so just forget it. George, listen, you want to keep Gracie home from that uplifter's pageant, don't you? Yes, I do. Well, leave it to me. I will furnish the grandmother. But, Bill, I, I want somebody my own age. George, settle for a grandmother. Great-great-grandmothers are hard to find. <laughs> uh, goodbye, Summer. Yes, <laughs> Well, George, meet the grandmother. Hello, George. <laughs> Why, it's it's Melina Dietrich. Yes, it's some grandma, huh, George? George, pop your eyes back in your head. <laughs> oh, well, excuse me for staring, Miss Dietrich, but uh, those are pretty shoes you have on. <laughs> But I'm not wearing them on my knees. <laughs> it's, uh, it's hard to believe that you're a grandmother. You're, you're so young. I'm not as young as you think, Mr. Burns. I'm old enough to be your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I explained the situation to Marlena, George. If you go along with the gag as a personal favor to me. Yes, it sounds like a lot of fun. Besides, it's time I did something for Bill. I've said no to him so often. <laughs> I bet you have. <laughs> and to make Gracie really jealous, Marlena's going to pretend that she's fallen in love with you. Well, do you think Gracie will believe that Marlena Dietrich could fall for me? She should believe it. Really? Yes. I've heard she's a little peculiar. <laughs> It's a nice T.L. <laughs> hey, say, uh, I, 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 I think I just heard Gracie come in the front door. I'll go and usher her. Well, I'm back at last, Bill. Is George all right? Oh, he's fine, Gracie. Did you find a grandmother to sit with him tonight? Oh, yeah, she's with him right now. Oh, that's sweet. I must go in and say hello to the dear little thing. Well, hello there, grandmother. No, no, don't get up. I get you. Oh, grandmother. <laughs> well, grandmother, what long, beautiful legs you have. <laughs> 
the better for men to see me, my dear. Oh, now, wait a minute. You're Marlena Dietrich. You're no grandmother. But I am. My daughter is married and has a child. Judge, does that make her a grandmother? <laughs> In this country, it does. <laughs> to find a little old lady with her knitting. I love to knit. As a matter of fact, I knitted this dress I'm wearing. It took me weeks. Yeah, I can see you put a lot into it. <laughs> well, now you can go to the Uplifters pageant, Gracie, and don't worry. Molina will do things for me. Like what? Well, first I thought I would rub his chest with camphorated oil. Yeah? I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But why? Well, you might not be able to find things. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm sure I can find the oil. But before you leave, I wish you would point out his, his chest. <laughs> it's right under this button. <laughs> Run along. Run along, Gracie. Yes, why do you hesitate, Mrs. Stearns? Don't you trust your husband alone with me? Well, sure I trust him. It's you I'm worried about. <laughs> me? Well, yes. George can resist you, but... Can you resist George? I'll force myself. <laughs> a beautiful woman like you is a, an unlighted powder cake, and George is just the punk who can light it. Now, look, Gracie. Well, whatever you do, don't look into his eyes, Miss Dietrich. Once you've gazed into those twin pools of passion, you're a goner. <laughs> Really? Yeah. The blue one isn't so bad, but watch out for that little red one. To a finer jig and tune in all your bond days. The jaunty, bouncy rhythm of it. And more than just the rhythm, these great Irish songs, like all our favorite music, combine many other fine musical parts. Now let the orchestra demonstrate. Here's a St. Patrick's Day song you know as well as you know your own name. But can you recognize it from just this mellow harmony? Now we'll stir in the rich counter melody. And here's a dash of vigorous rhythm. To round out this great song, let's have the melody. You can see how it takes not just one, but many musical parts all skillfully blended together to bring you this rich, full scoring of when Irish eyes are smiling. And as it is with America's favorite music, so too with America's favorite coffee, superb Maxwell House coffee, for its skill in blending that brings you that famous good-to-the-last-drop flavor, flavor you'll enjoy in no other coffee. And that famous flavor is the reason why more people enjoy Maxwell House than any other brand at any price. To create the rich, heartwarming goodness that's yours in every cup of Maxwell House, our experts combine not one but many choicest varieties of highland-grown Latin American coffees. First, they select Manizales for mellowness. For extra richness, they add Medellin. Other choice coffees give the Maxwell House blend vigor. And finally, Bucaramanga's coffees contribute their fine, full body. perfectly blended into one great coffee, radiant roasted to flavor perfection, and brought to you vacuum packed, not just days fresh, but roaster fresh. And because you folks on the West Coast really know and enjoy coffee at its best, Maxwell House is blended and roasted for you right here on the West Coast. So treat yourself to the best in coffee drinking enjoyment. 
Enjoy the extra flavor of America's favorite brand of coffee, delicious Maxwell House. Always good to the last drop. I can't leave those two alone together. I've got to get rid of Dietrich. Oh, Gracie, there's nothing to worry about. George has a cold. A cold gives George more sex appeal than ever. It, <laughs> it, it, it makes his voice husky. What if he should forget himself and sing to her? That'd get rid of Dietrich. <laughs> She'd be powerless to move. George's singing has a certain spell about it. Did you say spell, or have you got a cold, too? <laughs> And I'm not leaving George alone with Molly and the Dietrich. I'll just have to miss the pageant. But, Gracie, if you're not in the pageant, we'll be out on a limb. You think that's a limb? You should see the limbs I've got to worry about. <laughs> I mean, who turned into a butterfly? Well, let Clara Bagley turn into a butterfly. She might be a sensation. Your costume's too small for her. She won't have anything to wear. In that case, she's sure to be a sensation. <laughs> I'm staying home tonight. Oh, d don't give up. Maybe we can think of some way to get rid of Dietrich. Yeah, well, uh, Blanche. Hmm? Blanche, I think I've got an idea. Now, she's pretty crazy about Bill Goodwin. So? So, we'll make her think that while she's wasting her time with George, another woman is stealing Bill. What woman could steal Bill from Dietrich? Oh, um, Blanche, did you say, did you get those tights for your Sprite costume? Yes. Well, put them on and come with me. You're the woman. Gracie, <laughs> I can't compete with Dietrich. What about her legs? Well, you've got just as many. <laughs> now, get into those tights and come over to the house as soon as you can. <laughs> Mr. Burns, your wife has been gone for quite a while. I don't think our little scheme to make her jealous is working. Oh, don't worry. It will. You know, I really shouldn't stay here. It uh, scares you to be alone with a man like me, huh? Yes. What would I do if you collapsed? <laughs> yeah, that's what scares you, I say. Uh, Paul, I'm back. How are you feeling, George? Just fine, Gracie. Yes, your husband has been making a lot of progress. George Burns. She means my cold is getting better. <laughs> oh. Uh, tell me something. Has uh, George sung to you? I know. Can George sing? Can he sing? Well, he's got the world's most convincing voice. You know that song of yours, See What the Boys in the Back Room Will Have? Yes. Well, when George sings that, everybody runs for the back room. <laughs> That's true. Let me hear you sing, George. All right. <clears throat> I'm writing her a letter to Virginia where I met her. And now I feel better because I know I'm going home. <laughs> well, Helena, what do you think? Which way is the back room? <laughs> that's, a, that's a different song. Oh, Judge, please don't sing anymore. I'm afraid Marlena will swoon. I'm a little worried myself. George, suppose I sing a song for you. I'd love it. All right. Now imagine that you hear an orchestra. Say, I am hearing it. Falling in love again Never wanted to What am I to do? I can't help it Love's always in my game, play it how I may. I was made that way, I can't help it. Men cluster to me like moths upon the flame. And if their wings burn, I know I'm not to blame.
You're good, uh, you're good too, Marlena. Uh, oh, excuse me, there's someone I'm expecting. Here I am, Gracie. But I feel silly in these tights. Well, you look stunning, Blanche. Absolutely stunning. You shouldn't hide bones as beautiful as yours. <laughs> Come on in. Uh, uh, Miss Dietrich, I'd like you to meet a very, very dear friend of Bill Goodwin. How do you do, sir? <laughs> I'm a woman. Oh, I'm sorry. Those trousers fooled me. <laughs> oh, those aren't trousers. They're tight. Aren't they awfully loose? <laughs> oh, I know. They, they cling to me perfectly. Well, sure, it's the skin that's loose. <laughs> Thanks, Gracie. Oh, that's okay, Blanche. You're my friend. Gracie, what's the idea of bringing Blanche over here on that get-up? Well, I just want Molly and the to meet her new rival, Blanche Morton. Blanche is my rival. That's right. While you're sitting here with George Burns, Blanche is stealing Bill away from you. Yes. He saw me in these tights and fell head over heels. I don't blame him. That would throw anybody. <laughs> you know, before you know it, Blanche may be Mrs. Goodwin. What goes on here? There happens to be a Mr. Morton. No, George. I was fooled, too. She's a woman. <laughs> yeah, and you'll be quiet, George. You're delirious. <laughs> so I'm losing Bill by staying young. Yes. And you, if you want to win him back, you'd better take him out tonight and get him candy and flowers and champagne and buy him a dinner. But that's what I always do. <laughs> Lucky Willie. Come in. Hi, Gracie. Hi, Marlena. Hi, Blanche. Ooh. Blanche, what's the idea of running around in your long underwear? <laughs> Those are supposed to be tights, Bill. Yes, and uh, Blanche is supposed to be a you of suppressed desire. Huh? <laughs> I understand she might even become Mrs. Goodwin. Mrs. Goodwin? Blanche, I've got a mother. <laughs> uh, how do you feel about Blanche Morton? Well, she looks like... Uh, Bill, before yes. you say anything, I want you to know that Blanche is crazy about Maxwell House coffee. Oh, yes, Bill. I love the rich, delicious, mellow goodness of Maxwell House. Well, naturally. I love Maxwell House coffee, too, Bill. Well, sure. <laughs> that good to the last drop flavor is so satisfying. But she doesn't love it as much as Blanche. Blanche is always running to the market to get some. Yes, and that's how I get most of my exercise. <laughs> <laughs> You could say that Maxwell House Coffee is responsible for my figure. I've made my decision. I'm taking Blanche to a justice of the peace. You're going to marry her? No, I'm going to sue her for every penny she's got. <laughs> Blaming that figure on Maxwell House. <laughs> Why, Maxwell House Coffee is America's favorite. It's, it's bought and enjoyed by more people than any other brand of coffee at any price. You'll hear from my lawyers, Blanche Morton. Goodbye. Come on, Gracie. Let's go catch Bill. What for? I, I want to talk him out of that suit. Oh, forget it, Blanche. You look better in tight. <laughs> well, this is a fine mess. In just one hour, the curtain goes up on our pageant, and Marlena Dietrich is still at your house with George. Yeah, well, there must be some way... Oh, wait a minute. Hmm? She's a grandmother. Her daughter has a child. Hand me a telephone, Blanche. I've got an idea. I'll answer it, George. Hello? Oh, hello, Mama. What? Who is this? This is your daughter. Come on, Mama. Your grandson says he wants to see you. Just a moment. My grandson isn't old enough to talk. I know. He wrote me a note. <laughs> I don't believe you're my daughter. You don't, huh? Falling in love again, never wanted to, what am I to do? You sound like Mrs. Burns. Can't help it. <laughs> Is that Gracie on the phone? Yes, she's pretending she's my daughter so that I'll come home. Mama, I hear a man's voice. Where are you? If you don't know where I am, how did you know where to call me? <laughs> Falling in love again. Mama. No, Mrs. Burns. <laughs> I think I'd stay here with Daddy. <laughs> George, how long have you been married to Gracie? Fifteen years. Why? That's what I'd like to know. Why? <laughs> I 
I've got a big appetite. <laughs> Are you back again, Gracie? Yes, George, and you've won. I'll stay home tonight. Good. Well, I guess that means I can be running along. I'm sorry about your Beverly Hills Uplift Society, Mrs. Burns. What kind of a club is that? Well, I'll tell you all about it as we walk to the door. Fine. Good night, George. Good night, Marlena. Now, you see, Marlena, the Beverly Hills Uplift Society is a group of girls. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I gotta tell Bill Goodwin that we won. Hello? Hello, Bill. This is George. Yeah? Well, your scheme worked. Gracie finally gave up. Really? Yep. Of course, it took the prettiest legs in Hollywood to do it. Oh, in fact, I used my brain, too. <laughs> That's some more summer stuff, I guess. <laughs> well, Marlena, D- uh, Marlena Dietrich is just leaving the house if you want to pick her up. Well, okay, George. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye Willie. Oh, well, good night, George. I'll see you about 11. Well, you see me at 11. Where, where are you going? To the pageant. Pageant? Well, who's going to stay with me? Blanche Martin. She'll be right over. I thought Blanche was a sprite. Well, she was, but she's turning over her tights to the newest member of the Beverly Hills Uplift Society. You mean Marlena, Marlena Dietrich? Dietrich. Yeah. Right? Well, wait for me, baby. I'll get my hat. <laughs> Gracie will return in just a moment. Join us again next Thursday when we'll all be back. George Burns, Gracie Allen, Bill Goodwin, Harry Lubin and the Maxwell House Orchestra, and yours truly, Toby Reed. And now, here are our stars. Ladies and gentlemen, next Thursday will be the night of the Academy Awards. That night, we'll have on our program a fine actress who's one of the top candidates for Hollywood's highest honor. Oh, George, that's silly. I'm on the program every week. <laughs> I'm talking about Janie Wyman, who was nominated for her great performance in Johnny Belinda. Oh, wonderful. It'll be so nice to see Janie. It certainly will. <laughs> Friends, this month of March has been designated by the president as Red Cross Month. During this one annual appeal, the Red Cross must raise funds to carry on its important work for the entire year. The Red Cross program for 1949 includes aiding in disaster, serving the armed forces, serving veterans, promoting health and safety, serving youth, and helping the unfortunate in all parts of the world. Remember, the Red Cross is a partnership of the people. You too can help in these troubled times through your Red Cross. Good night, folks. You like good things the easy way, then get instant Maxwell House coffee. So good. So good. True coffee flavor and fragrance because instant Maxwell House is not a so-called coffee product. It's all pure Maxwell House coffee in instant form. And so easy. So easy. Instant Maxwell House means great coffee instantly in your cup. No fuss, no muss, no bother. Today, try Instant Maxwell House. Instantly good to the last drop. Until next Thursday when Jane Wyman will be our guest. Good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's favorite brand of coffee. Always good to the last drop. The George Burns and Gracie Allen Show is written by Paul Henning and Keith Fowler.